We do think that we will um, have a positive year this year. Uh, if we think about Fed rate hikes in general, the reason why the market historically has done somewhat well is because it's typically paired with a healthy economy, right? Why is the Fed raising rates? It's because the economy is on solid footing and we don't need that crisis uh, type stimulus that we had before. Our overall view this year, though, Brian, is positive yet realistic. The realistic side is that gains moderate, especially as we have this transition with the Fed. And the other thing that we've, we know from history is after we have really shallow pullback years like last year, we tend to have uh, more normal pullbacks. Uh, and that's what we expect this year, especially with this Fed transition, with the debate, are we, uh, is the Fed moving too fast or too slow? Your market navigators got your own kind of dot plots like the Fed. You, you mark stuff red or green, red, less attractive, green, more attractive. You see more mm -hmm. attractive on U.S. equities, particularly small caps. What makes small caps so attractive to you? Because they've had a miserable run the last six months or so, Keith. Yeah, that's right. Well, the first thing on the U.S., um, we've been longstanding uh, bulls on the U.S. in general. We just think that uh, we have high-quality companies. The economy is more on solid footing. That said, so we're seeing, um, you know, you know, coming into this year, some of these other areas are, are, are oversold. And within the U.S., you know, small caps in particular had a big run early on last year after the um, after the elections, after more stimulus came through. And then they really just consolidated quite a bit. So this year, with, with small caps now trading at a 20-year relative low on a valuation basis, so really the lowest relative to large caps since around 2000, and we still think the economy is going to grow above trend, so that should be supportive of small caps. One distinction I want to make, Brian, a lot of people focus on the Russell uh, 2000. We're focused more on the S&P 600, which has more of a cyclical bias and a little bit of more or less of those speculative growth names, which we think will be more challenged during this, as we move past this max okay. liquidity from the Fed. Okay, we're going to watch the SML, that small cap 600 as well. By the way, easier is 1,400 fewer stocks, Keith, so less to keep track of. <laughs> also in your navigator, you like energy. Now, oil and gas stocks, top of the show, we pointed out six of the top seven in the S&P 500 this year are oil and gas names up about 20% on average. I don't think that kind of return can continue what do you think, and are you still bullish on energy even after this heck of a run we've had in the last 10 days? Yeah, no doubt. Um, we've been bullish on the energy sector and ha have had it as an overweight uh, for most of the last year, and I know it's a, an area that you focus on quite a bit. So, yes, we, a lot of these areas, I mean, we're up about 10 percent for the sector as a whole already this year. But, Brian, that said, even though we're probably due for some type of consolidation, we still think there's upside. I'm going to give you another RBI stat, hopefully, that may surprise you. Over the last three years, yep. even with the big run in energy over the last uh, year, the S&P energy sector is trailing the S&P by 78 percent. That just shows how hard it was Ooh. hit before. And as we see energy stay firm and the economy do well, we think energy is poised to outperform this year.